Welcome everyone to this week's Azure update. It's the 3rd of October and once again I am traveling. I'm doing the AI tour in Canada. So I just did Toronto and I'm about to do Ottawa. So I'm recording this from my hotel room. Again, apologies, normal service will resume next week. I did get one video out this week on Azure Container Storage V2. So this focuses on using the higher performance NVMe storage that we now have on many of the nodes where we create our containers. So just dived into kind of what that is and the functionality it offers. So onto what's now on the compute side. So the Linux consumption hosting plan for Azure Functions is being retired in three years time. So you'd wanna go ahead and move over to the Flex consumption plan that has better scaling, networking and various other controls. Also retirements, so the Azure VMware solution AV36 nodes are being retired, again, three years time. So move to a newer node type before that date. The NVV4 VMs are being retired this time next year. I think we talked about this last week, but these are the GPU enabled, more visualization based SKUs. So move to one of the newer, for example, the V5s. The Azure Container Apps Service Connector is being retired at the end of March 2026. Now, if you're using that service connector via the portal, you're okay. But if you use the SDK, the Azure CLI, or anything else, you're going to need to recreate them using another method. There is no built in replacement service at this time. The Azure Compute Gallery now has a soft delete capability in preview. This is free. And it basically gives you a seven day grace period. So if you delete an image and then realize that was a mistake, as long as it's within seven days, you can um, bring it back. And that's gonna work for private, direct shared galleries and community galleries. And then the AKS Network Policy Manager for Linux nodes is being retired. Instead, you wanna to move to the Cilium um, Network Policy capability. Azure Traffic Manager, they've basically changed the underlying infrastructure they use for the health checks. It's going to give better scalability, better reliability, which means a better Azure Traffic Manager. But as part of that, it means it gets new IP addresses. Now, if you're using for your Azure firewalls, for example, the Azure Traffic Manager service tag, which represents the IP address used for Azure services, you're fine. There's nothing to do. But if you're not using the service tags and refer to IP addresses directly, you're going to want to go and check out the documentation, which has the updated list of IPs. On the storage side, so BlobFuse V1 is being retired this time next year. So instead, you want to move to the V2. Remember, BlobFuse makes it easy to mount blob containers or data lake file systems. And what it does is on your Linux file system, it provides a virtual file system over the container content. So you can then interact just like it was part of your local file system. Basically, you need to move to the V2, which is where all the investment is. On the database side, so the Azure SQL database long-term retention now has an immutability capability in preview. So immutability is really important when you think about bad actors that hey, they'll attack my database, but they'll also go and delete my backups. So I can't restore and recover. When something's immutable, it becomes a write once, read many, so worm. So then the attackers cannot maliciously remove them before their defined time duration, or even a legal hold in this case. And there is no additional cost for this. And then the Microsoft SQL extension in VS Code now supports SQL on Fabric. So I'm using VS Code, I can just as easily interact with my SQL on Fabric instances as any other SQL database. And it does include the entry based authentication. So I get a nice single sign on. The Azure Resource Manager has some enhanced metrics now available both in the portal and via REST APIs and SDK. Basically, I can now view either the traffic latency throttling that's associated with the control plane interactions. We just jump over really quickly. So here what you can see is the metric namespace is the Azure Resource Manager. And I'm selecting traffic, but there's also latency available. So I'm looking at the traffic associated with the Azure Resource Manager. 
But if you then apply splitting, what I can now do is I can say, what do I want to split on? So I could split, for example, over the resource provider or the resource type. So I have a number of different options for what I can actually split over. You see there's region, the type of method, the operation types. You get a lot of different options here. And then I could split, for example, on the resource provider and see all the different types of resource provider I'm using and those interactions around it. So that's a, a pretty nice uh, new set of metrics that I can leverage. The Azure Machine Learning data labeling is being deprecated. So you're going to need to move some other third party provider. There's not another native one available. The Microsoft Agent Framework is now available in preview. So this builds on Autogen and Semantic Kernel to give you a single framework for your agent creations. It includes things like multi-agent patterns. It has open, open API support, so you can integrate into any API. Grok 4 is now available in AI Foundry. So this has 128,000 token context, has native tool use abilities. It has first principles reasoning, which means it tries to think like a scientist or a detective, for example. So it will break problems down step by step. It has Azure AI content safety on by default. So you'll have, for example, safeguards across your prompts and deployments just automatically in place. Today, it's a global standard deployment type only. And obviously, this is on top of the Grok for fast reasoning for fast reasoning in agentic workloads and the Grok for non reasoning, which is the same weight model. But the system prompt says, hey, you're not allowed to use reasoning. So those are all ready available. Um, Side note, the Anthropic Claude Sonnet 4.5 is now available in GitHub, Copilot Pro, Pro Plus Business, and Enterprise SKU. So if you wanted to use a different model for your coding partner, um, the Anthropic uh, Cloud Sonnet 4.5 is an option. The Sentinel Data Lake has gone GA. So this is a really nice capability to remove cost as a barrier for getting those signals into Sentinel. Security is all about having signals to correlate over. Well, now that cost of the analytics tier is not a blocking point. And it actually builds you based on the compressed data size. So I think overall it's like a 6x lower cost. So you still use the analytics tier for some of those signals because that has the full advanced hunting, the alerting, the incident management. But the new data lake tier gives me up to 12 years storage. It still supports full KQL query, including I can use machine learning functions, Python-based analytics via Jupyter Notebooks. They also announced the Microsoft Sentinel graph in preview for Defender and Purview. So it makes it easier to connect the dots between the elements of an attack. They announced an MCP server in preview, so my AI application can easily talk to Sentinel and find out information about security um, just very easily using the MCP protocol. And the Microsoft Security Store is now available to easily find and buy security solutions from the Microsoft partners. And that is it. As always, thank you for watching. And yes, normal service uh, will resume next week. Take care.